So thank you for joining us today. Like I said, this webinar features youth voices in environmental initiatives. Before I get started, I want to acknowledge that I'm calling in from the unceded territory of the Cowichan Nation. I live in Cowichan Bay, which is actually on the winter village site of the Cowichan Nation called Telalpos. They have lived here since time in memorial, and I'm a second generation settler on this land. It is my hope as an uninvited settler that through this work, I am um, building inclusive relationships and working on the injustices that colonizations left. We have presentations from three different groups today, and they're calling in from across Coast Salish territory. We have Nanus Bay Elementary in Snana'as territory, Dover Bay Secondary in Stanamuk territory, and Cowichan Secondary in Cowichan territory. So we're welcoming these student voices from across the Coast Salish Sea, and it's an honor to be on this land today. The idea for this webinar came to me um, in the fall when I had the opportunity to have a tour of the food forest at Dover Bay Secondary and I was greeted by two members of the Dover Bay Eco Club and I was just blown away by their action and initiative, their professionalism, their commitment to taking on amazing tasks and the impact that they made in their school over the years. And so in seeing that it made me reach further field to understand what other eco clubs and green teams are doing. And I wanted to create some space for student voices in our webinar series to be able to share the work of students. I feel like it's been one of my biggest inspirations this year as a community animator in the Central Island region. Um, and I wanna help spread that inspiration to other people working in this area. So for today, um, we will have an interview with Couch and Secondary Environmental Stewardship course, then a new Bay Elementary Green Team, and then Dover Bay uh, Secondary School Eco Club. Couch, this Couch and Secondary group and the New Bay couldn't join us live today, so I have pre-recorded interviews of those two groups. Um, and then we're really fortunate to have Dover Bay here live, which gives them the opportunity to offer a presentation about their Eco Club, um, and as well, an opportunity for us to have questions and answers with them and learn more about how they made such a successful club at their school. So first up, we have Cowichan Secondary Environmental Stewardship course. Cowichan Secondary is a large high school located in the heart of Duncan, and they launched a new course this year. Um, and it's really exemplary. There's very few courses like this in the province, and they've had such success with it in its first year that they have full enrollment for their program for next year. The Environmental Stewardship course, although it's not a student-led eco club or green team, it's focused around many independent projects and students are working in the community and an, an opportunity to take a lot of action and initiative in their community. Um, before I launch into the video, I just want to note the middle picture of the student with its, their feet stomping in the bin. Uh, later, you'll hear about the chickpeas that are in there that are getting shelled. So I just wanted to share a visual of that when it comes up in the video. I also wanted to note that the video is recorded at Kin Park Youth Urban Farm. Cowichan Secondary is lucky that they actually border, their fence line borders on a youth urban farm. And this youth urban farm has the opportunity for the school to come over and other youth groups to participate in programming there. Um, they have volunteer drop-in days and it's a farm run by youth for youth. It's an exceptional program and fortunate to have a high school beside a youth urban farm. And if folks do have questions about that later, I'd be happy to talk more about that. Um, so next, I will play a video interviewing two students, Octavia and Yvonne from Couch and Secondary. Um, I hope you can hear the audio okay, and maybe I'll get Addy to give me a thumbs up if it's working in a minute. Um, we had to compete with a lot of bird noise in the background. Beautiful bird song, uh, but it is noisy, and you'll probably want to turn your volume up high to be able to hear it. So Addy, once we're rolling, if you can give me a thumbs up, let me know if you can hear the sound. We are here in the Cowichan Valley at Kin Park, which is a youth urban park right beside Cowichan Secondary School. And I'm here with the Environmental Stewardship course at Cowichan Secondary. And we're here to learn a bit more about what they're up to in their course and the sort of environmental work they're doing. So if we want to start, if you could just both introduce yourselves um, and tell me a little bit of what is environmental stewardship at Cal High? What sort of course is it all about? Hello, I'm Octavia. And Stewardship is about um, environment and getting to work in the environment and learning about all different types of plants and animals and relationships. 
relationships between humans and the planet? Hi, uh, I'm Yvonne. Uh, a lot of what we do in this course uh, revolve around field work, uh, be it uh, screen keeping, uh, gardening, uh, substrate sampling. Uh, we're often out in the open, uh, just uh, learning and experiencing. And I feel like this is what sets it apart from other courses, the fact that you're uh, there in the moment and seeing everything with your own eyes. So I've heard snapshots of a bunch of amazing projects you've been working on, and I'm curious to hear from you, what's one project that stands out that you've been working on, either at your school or in the community, on an environmental initiative? Um, just yesterday we did substrate sampling, and that was really fun and amazing to do, and I would love to do that just on my own in the future. Uh, as part of my independent project, um, I set out uh, in my neighborhood to paint fish next to storm drains. Uh, one of my teachers uh, was able to provide the training and the equipment, and my friend and I uh, spent a good portion of the day uh, just painting fish uh, as part of a movement to raise community awareness about the fact that um, the debris and litter that may get down into the drains are unfiltered and empty directly into streams. So that was just a thing that I did. What role do you see for youth in environmental initiatives? Um, <laughs> I think youth play a big part in environmental initiatives and because it's our future mainly that we are growing up to live in everyone older than us is going to die and we're just going to be left here with the earth and so I think it's important for us to take care of it because it's our, it's where we're going to be for the rest of our lives. We're all like, youth are like under 18 right now and so we have a lot of life to live. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. I'm curious, what has inspired you most uh, throughout this year? Either an example from the community or really a memorable moment you've had that's inspired you to want to take environmental action. Um, just being out in nature and enjoying, like I've been falling in love with nature way more in this class than any time else because I've had so many experiences hiking, being in this garden, going to the beach, learning about mason bees, everything, it was so interesting and I would love to take more environmental action and like, make the world a prettier place. Yeah. Has any plant or animal stood out to you as like a favorite plant or animal or one you're most curious about? Mm -hmm. The chickpeas were very interesting to me when we, we um, what is it called? Shedded them or shedded? Like, we took the the shells off shells the chickpeas. Off, yeah. Who um, knew we could grow chickpeas yeah, on the island? I did not know that. So that was very interesting. <laughs> did you get to stomp on them? To yeah, get the shells and off. I stomped on them. Yeah, that was so fun, and I will remember that for a long time. Um, and animals that stood out to me, probably like the beach animals. They were so interesting and cute, and like I love that book that Mr. Lockdo. <laughs> the one that I didn't really like want to read, but it had all the beachcombers guide. It was very interesting to read through. Fascinating. Yeah. So many amazing creatures live on the beach. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Uh, so I think what uh, what's inspired me the most about this course is um, seeing what a lot of community members have uh, dedicated to environmental conservation. Uh, just seeing their passion for the environment, how much work they put in, uh, all the cool stuff that they do. Uh, and it's really just all inspiring for me to know that there are people out there uh, taking a stand. And that's something that uh, has really inspired me since I, uh, since I took up this course. So that's pretty much it. Is there anything else you'd like to share about your experience in the course or any words to other youth that are working on environmental projects as well? I think that every school should have an environmental course that, because you get to go out in nature so much and I think that's really important to your 
mental health, your physical health, and just your learning abilities. And I think nature can teach you a lot. So uh, I think just the biggest thing about this course for me is that it completely changes someone's perspective uh, of the environment. Uh, every stream becomes an ecosystem. Uh, every forest becomes a network. Uh, every salmon uh, becomes a special organism uh, with cultural and spiritual significance. And um, and that's and and one of the quotes in my independent project uh, happens to be: uh, Can we look at something so simple and see something so complex? Uh, can we look at something so mundane and see something so beautiful? And I think that's uh, something that, I think that's a quote that uh, really uh, encapsulates the takeaway uh, of this course for me. So, uh, highly recommend it. Thank you both for sharing your wisdom, beautiful quotes, your passion, your inspiration, and just for giving us a window into this incredible course that is quite a unique course. There's very few students who get to experience it. So I hope in you sharing your news about your experience in the course, we can inspire more teachers to take on programming like this in their schools. So thank you both. Thank you. <laughs> what a great thumbs up at the end there. Um, I just want to mention that it is a really exemplary program that they're running at Cal High with their environmental stewardship course. The students are spending most of their time hands on outside in the field. Um, and as a pilot project this year, I think it can set an example for other courses on Vancouver Island if they're curious to do similar work. If you are curious to learn more, I can get you in touch with a teacher, John Lofto, that's piloted it this year. I just want to say a big thank you to Octavia and Yvonne for taking the time to share some news about their course. Um, and also we had a student film for us too. So it was a communal effort. So thanks, thanks to College and Secondary for sharing information about their program. The other group that I wanted to bring forward their voices um, is the New Spay Elementary School Green Team. Often when we think of eco clubs and environmental stewardship, we think of secondary schools. But there's an amazing network of elementary green teams um, and youth are starting young taking action on environmental initiatives. Um, so I want to share the voices of the elementary school green team at Ninus Bay. Uh, thanks to Sophia, Caitlin, and Alexis. Uh, they'll tell us a bit more about what the Ninus Bay elementary school green team has been up to. In the present, in their video, they share a few pictures, a few things I just want to share pictures of first so you can get a visual of them. They talk about their tater tower, the structure that they're growing potatoes in, their hungry bin, which is a worm composter. They talk about their um, rainbow garden, which where they're starting all little uh, flower transplants that cover all the different colors of the rainbow and sharing those with schools, with families um, at their school. And then you'll also hear more about their seed library. So just to give you a few images um, for the video that's to come. With the video, I recorded them over Zoom so we could get a window inside their school. Um, it's a little funny to have a Zoom inside a Zoom, um, but I guess we're all getting used to these. <laughs> technologies that we're working with this year. Um, so here's an interview with the Nanus Bay Elementary School Green Team. I want to welcome the Nanus Bay Elementary School Green Team to our webinar. And I wanted to start by if one of you could introduce what is a school green team? Some people not, might not be familiar with that term. Can someone share what is a school green team? Um, well, we do environmentalism. We garden in, the, in our school garden. We learn about farming and try to inform our school about um, gardening and agriculture. Thanks. Could you each share your name um, and tell me one reason why you wanted to join the green team this year? Um, I'm Caitlin and I was very interested in um, because I was really interested about farming and like agriculture. Um, I'm Alexis and I joined it because um, I enjoyed gardening. I don't know. Thanks, Alexis. Hi, my name is Sophia and I joined Green Team because um, I wanted to spend more time outside in the garden. I wanted to have a garden more. How's the garden looking these days? 
Pretty good. Great. You've just planted some sunflowers. What else do you have growing in there? Um, we have marigold, kale, Swiss chard, raspberries, blueberries, um, some lot, lots of flowers. And some potatoes. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of a ton of potatoes and Mr. Brown's own invention called the Tater Tower. Ooh, what's the Tater Tower? Well, it's, a, it's a kind of like a tower. So it's made out of chicken wire, wire and it's like a dome. And then inside there's like some compost. And, and like stuff. leaves. Mm -hmm. Then inside of there they have potatoes starting to sprout. Yeah, and then yeah. they'll sprout too and make a whole like big thing. Wow. Have you seen any potato sprouts start yet? Yes. yes. And at the bottom, I'm pretty sure it starts to decay and make soil. Yeah. So it's like a compost and a potato growing tower at the same time. And then we also have our hungry bin. Tell me about that. Um, well, there's a bunch of like paper and like compost and stuff like that in there. And then there's a bunch of worms in there. And then they process all the worm like worms, like worm poop into like the bottom um, to make so soil and fertilizer for the food. So I'm curious, why do you think it's important to have a green team at your school? So we can help the environment and educate more of the younger students in our class. Yeah, and their school, yeah. Are there any projects you'd like to see the green team take on next year? Well, I would, yeah, I'm not going to be here next year, but I would like to see them like doing, like we're doing this year, lots of work in the garden, lots of work with other schools too, and what they're doing, and lots of planting. We're hoping to make it into a pollinator garden. Yeah. Ooh. Outside of our library. Awesome. Tell me more about a pollinator garden. So there would be flowers that pollinators like bees and butterflies, butterflies, butterflies birds, any and like sort of pollinator, insects, anything kind of up there. They go and it's just the one, it's like, I don't know, maybe colors have something to do with maybe yeah. the taste of the nectar, I don't know. Yeah, but we want to get like um, flowers, what really, what pollinators really are attracted to and plant them there to make, to help with pollination. Also, we haven't talked about it, but one other thing that I hope starts to happen is maybe we find like some dead logs and then in the woodworking room, we drill holes in it and we make them little bee houses. Yeah, that'd be really cool. That sounds like it'd be a great compliment to the pollinator garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's your choice. Yeah. Great awesome. idea. Could you guys tell me about the information that's behind you on the table? Um, well, this is the seed garden. Um, we have butterflies. Okay. Our butterflies. Oh, what you see? Butterflies. Then what, what's this is holding? We have some different types of bugs and butterflies. Um, this, we got the monarch, we got the Chinese mantis, and the magnificent owl. That magnificent owl is so cool. Yeah. And, and what is this booth all about? Why do you have it here in the library? Um, so we can spread awareness. Yeah, and then we have here, and then also Mr. Brown brought this in. Um, how old is it again, Mr. Brown? It's a hundred-year-old seeding tool. Yeah. It's actually pretty. And these are like, all can you seeds. identify it all, all like the different types of seeds in here? And then it's opening soon, so I think we might open this. We should harvest that tomorrow. Yeah. Let's open it tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. And then over there, I don't know, I think it left, but there's something that says sprouting like soon. Do you want to go see the pollinator in the out? There's a, a sprouting station. It's empty. Great. I'd love to see it. Yeah, it's empty because I think we just like it's empty right now, but we have lots of things like in here. And then we also got the board that the leadership oh no. We found one of these in our classrooms. We, had, we found one of these, as you can see, planting the rainbow for Star Wars Day, made the forest to be with you. And then we picked up garbage and learning about bees. Wonderful. Our planting rainbow, we have um, rainbow bees. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like flower, zinnia, foxglove, snapdragon, cosmo. Can't say that word. <laughs> Lavender. And then we've got dual mix when I'm flower up and like walking. And all the different flowers combined make a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> I have one more question for you guys. I'm wondering what environmental goal would you like to take action on? Whether that be in the green team or just personally, what environmental goal inspires you to take action? Well, I wanna work on, I, I'm very concerned about ecosystems and endangered animals with their endangered ecosystems. I hope um, we could educate more younger kids about recycling. I'm hoping to cut down on like going to the grocery store and having to buy stuff. So because that, I don't know, because I know they use big machines to cut down all the plants and stuff usually, and that creates more gas and gas waste. Thank you three for sharing some of what the green team is up to. I feel like the more you talk, the more windows I get into all these projects you're working on. You guys are busy in the garden, in the library, in the halls, in classrooms. It's so neat to learn about it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. I want to welcome. So thanks to the New Bay Elementary School Green Team. Wonderful to have uh, elementary intermediate students willing to share their information on this webinar. Um, I can really see where these students are going to grow up to be. I feel like when we see the Dover Bay Eco Club, I can imagine this environmentalism starting at this younger age in elementary schools and how it can build um, throughout students' experience in schools. So wonderful to have the opportunity to be part of a green team in an elementary school and move on to an eco club in a secondary school. Um, so that wraps up our online videos. And I would like to now switch over our presentation to Dover Bay Secondary Eco Club. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, these are the students that have inspired um, this webinar. I've just been amazed by the work they've done at Dover Bay Secondary. And so I will stop my screen share and I will welcome the students of Dover Bay and they have a presentation to share with us. So welcome Dover Bay Secondary. Oh, Mika, oh, you're muted Mika. Hello. <laughs> Hi again. Hi, my name is Mika. I'm a grade 12 student at Dover Bay. It's my last year in high school. And I'm with a few leaders and executive of our club. Hello, my name is Elisa. Um, I'm in grade 10. Hi, my name is Vincy. I'm also in grade 10. And hi, my name is Afira, and I'm also a grade 10 student of Dover Bay. So um, I actually started to join the Eco Club back then in grade eight, just to find a place to get some more friends. But while doing so, I've encountered new connections from all over the world and mentors, which taught me the basics in everything we do in the club. We have fun while making little changes in our community that got bigger over time. The club does a lot of projects, which mainly initiated by students. Before COVID, we volunteered a lot in the community, such as uh, forage fish surveys with BIU Mabry, tree planting, stream keepers, and many more. We make sure that everyone feels connected, have fun, and feel safe. And usually at the beginning of the year, we advertise having pizza parties just to get the grade eights and new people engaged. However, right now during COVID, we can't really off offer any food, but we still get 30 students to volunteer every Thursday. I believe that having the consistency and bonding between members every in the previous year is the key that made us have some dedicated and loyal members in the club. And some projects that we're currently working on here is listed down there and Athira, Vinci, and Elisa will discuss about it. So each year, both, both elementary schools and high schools participate in an event in our district called the Energy Cup. Students are challenged to find ways to save more energies in schools, like turning down the heat or turning off all the lights during lunch or after school. 
The winning schools are rewarded with money that can be put towards saving more energy in our school and reducing our waste. And for us, the students we call the, that participate in the Energy Cup at our school, we call them the Energy Ambassadors. And paper recycling is our weekly activity that most of our general members come out to. We separate ourselves into teams to take on each hallway and collect paper from the classrooms. Along with that, we have school cleanups to pick up garbage left outside by the students. Recently, we asked classes to volunteer and pick up garbage at the end of the day. They get to step out of their three hour classes and get a breath of fresh air while also making our school cleaner. So here's another um, project we have is the food forest. I've actually talked to the previous presidents in the club and they actually started the initiative back in 2012. After getting a lot of funding and permit, it got finally approved in 2017, which I was lucky to be one, a part of a few members that build the wooden boxes from scratch, uh, putting all of the soil and mulches in the area. It was fun at first. However, it took me a while to get more members to volunteer as a new project. We had to do a lot of planning. However, just being there and doing the work a launcher after school is enough to get people um, asking me questions about what I'm doing. And then that's a way to get them interested. Little by little, I have gained members that can take over the garden after four years of taking the lead. One of our leaders right now is actually here, Athira. Thank you, Mika. So in the food forest, we have several type of plants which we maintain and take care of. Some of these plants are peas, kale, California poppies, carrots, etc. We also have watering schedule set so that the plants stay hydrated in the hot weather. Our latest project in the food forest is the herb garden, which is a plant bed with several different herbs such as oregano, basil, mint, and etc but we are very close to finishing up this project. So the seed sale. The seed sale is a fairly new initiative which we started at the start of the school year. The seeds we sell are harvested from plants in our own food forest, which we dry out. These dried out seeds are then put in seed packets created and designed by Eco Club students. We have also made a seed catalog, which is posted on our website for those who are new to gardening. Our overall profit from seed sale is from selling these seeds are about $700. And all proceeds will go towards a family who lost their house in a fire. Um, another one of our projects is the native plant garden. Our plan is to renovate the area outside the science wing to plant in plants that are native to us. Right now, the land is filled with invasive plants that will need to be cleared. Some of the native plants that will, that will be planted are salmon berries, huckleberries, salel, and organ grapes. We just started this project, so there is lots of work to be done. Awesome, and we have another new initiative. Just this year, we started our recycling center. So we've noticed a lot of students throw their garbage everywhere on school. And the school also disposes more than 70 garbage bags every day. So to stop this, we set, we set up a station in each hallway, which is our attempt to decrease garbage bags being disposed, as well as set up posters that would make students educate themselves on how to properly segregate their waste. Right now, it would take us a while to have proper bins in each hallways as we need more funding. They're really expensive, but I hope uh, by the end of the year, we can get this started. And then next year they can continue it and hopefully all uh, classroom bins would be would be uh, would would be getting rid of and then just have the sun the recycling center in each hallway. 
All right, so normally we'd have a week dedicated to putting on activities for a general student population for Earth Day called Earth Week. However, this year we couldn't do it because of COVID restrictions. So instead, we decided to hold an Earth Month where activities can be done outside of school. The reason it's an Earth Month is so that students can have more time to complete these activities. We've held a multimedia contest and a scavenger hunt where students signed up to find our now not lost mascot, Bruce. Bruce is the one in the middle of the picture, just right there. <laughs> Another part of Earth Month was sustainable crafts. Besides the seed sale, we had easy, fun, and quick to make activities for students, parents, and even teachers who happened to walk by. Some of the activities that we did were paper towel bird feeders, which worked really well, paracord bracelets, and newspaper planters. So uh, this is how we organized the club to actually get things done. Back then, there were only executives and sponsored teachers. However, this year, we have taken so many new initiatives, which we weren't even listed on our presentation. Therefore, we recruited new leaders. Each executives and leaders holds their own events in a week. We have something after school every day, aside from Wednesday and even on the weekends. So we have six execs and 11 leaders, as well as we have, we're thankful for our sponsored teachers. It's Mr. Dabka and Ms. Coleman. They're always there to help us and they're fine with our last minute request, our plans. And here's our meeting before COVID. We usually get around 30 or more students in, at lunchtime. However, right now we're trying to have general meetings online. Around 10 to 12 students usually join. And we also hold our executive meetings every week. And here's Athira, Vinci, and Lisa to talk about their inspiration to be part of the Eco Club. So what inspires me to be a part of Eco Club is the change we get to create in our community. Even if the change is just picking up a piece of garbage on our uh, school grounds, I feel like this change can inspire others to also be a part of that change. And that really inspires me to be more engaged in Eco Club and their activities. Um, what motivates me to be part of Eco Club? I think what motivates me to be um, to come to Eco Club three times a week is the club members. Everyone have been so nice and welcoming that I definitely couldn't stay away. I am also starting to feel that like Eco Club has become a part of my life that couldn't be erased. Each day we spend time together, we are building strong friendships that will definitely last. I'd like the Eco Club to become a family that our entire school is part of, where people join our activities because they genuinely have fun and that they don't leave once they get all the volunteer hours they need. Um, I want our Eco Club to have a bigger impact on the community, and I love the fact that we are able to participate with all of you in this webinar. Yes, yeah, so that's all with our presentations. Once again, we're from the Bay Eco Club. Our motto is to think globally and act locally. Feel free to ask questions or reach out to us on our social media or email, as well as learn more of our activities on our website. We could. Dover Bay Eco Club, thank you, Mika, Athira, Vinci, and Alyssa. That was phenomenal. I am just amazed by the breadth of work you can do in a year. I feel like myself as a teacher background, I can't even imagine as a teacher organizing that. And yet all these student initiatives are just bubbling up at Dover Bay and you're doing it with such a sense of organization and community and professionalism with it. Um, every time I hear these snapshots about what you're up to, I'm just more amazed um, at what you're able to accomplish in a year. I also wanna say that the Eco Club submitted a successful Farm to School BC grant this year. It was our one grant in the whole province that was written by students. Um, and so wonderful to also know that not only you're on the ground doing all this work, you're also behind the scenes creating more funding for these projects that are so meaningful in your school. So phenomenal work. 
Um, this is a great opportunity to take a chance to ask, uh, to have some questions for the Dover Bay Eco Club. Um, I think that the model that they've created has been so successful and interesting to look at how that could inspire other schools to create a similar model. One thing that I'm really interested in is your um, kind of how you've organized your executives and your leadership such that year after year, you've been able to sustain energy and leadership and members in your club. I know one of the challenges we can have around eco clubs or other student initiatives is that we get really passionate people in one year and then it fades the next year. And it seems like the eco club has been running over many years with the same sort of energy and momentum. Um, so while others are thinking of questions, I guess my, my first question to the eco club would be, what do you think has been made, has made you so successful to be able to sustain uh, your incredible work over the years? So um, we really like the idea of a club because we can have different great levels can interact with each other so we'll learn a lot from our previous alumni and then all the skills and develop into that are applied for the next year because a lot of uh, grade eights nines and grade tens can actually join our executive team and then they learn how the club structure works and hopefully next by the next year they're able to grow the club to a bigger, to an even successful club. Mika, how does it feel to be a grade 12 student stepping out of it? Do you feel like there's a wonderful team of new people to take it over? Yes, of course. We got like our first leader team right now, which is grade 11, uh, 11 team leaders and five more like executives. They're really into their work and they're such dedicated uh, students. So I'm thankful for them to always showing up as well as it's been a great year um, working together with them. I'm really happy on our achievements. Thanks, Mika. I'd like to hand it over if anyone else has questions for the Dover Bay Eco Club. write anything in the chat um, or unmute yourself and put your video on if you'd like um, but it's nice to if you have a longer question if you want to unmute yourself um, I'm wondering about the seed sale I think that is so amazing um, I think a lot of school gardens have problems like with summer maintenance but if you're kind of thinking you know what I'm just gonna harvest all the seeds in September then you're not so focused on making sure that you're there to water that, you know, lettuce and everything. And if it just goes to seed, it doesn't, it's fine because now you're generating income and creating the seed packets and stuff. Like that is so cool. Um, can you let us know, like what were some of the crops that sold really well? Like which ones were fun to collect? How did you actually, um, did you like clean? There was there like a seed cleaner or something that you borrowed? Like how did the fall, um, work kind of look for that seed sale? So I wasn't there for the full process, but I was there uh, for a bit of it. But so we usually take the heads, uh, if it's a flower, we usually take the heads and we usually hand pick the seeds out of the flower itself. And then we usually let it dry out so that it does it's not wet and doesn't get all moldy. So we make sure to fully dry it out. And that I was only there for the flowers. I wasn't there for all the kale and all of the hard parts, but yes. So we usually collect them in the summer. That was like the hardest part because for three years, I was the only one doing the, the watering of the plants on the food forest. But thankful this year we have some members that can actually help us. So we created the schedule, which they talked about. And then, so we harvested, so the process of harvesting is just, um, as Athira said, we handpicked them, we put them on the bins on our shed to let it dry, as well as we've done a lot of research in YouTube <laughs> just to know how it works. It's really helpful. And then I think Vinci can talk about how they designed the logo and all of that. Um, that took a long time. 
actually. We, um, to design the seed packets, we had a lot of prototypes we over and over and um, a lot, we came up with a lot of ideas, what color to make it. And yeah, I think mo uh, most of the time we did it online until finally we got our end result. <laughs> and yeah, I think we're thinking of changing our seed packets for next year. So each year we'll have like different signs. So we can look back one time, <laughs> 2021. Yeah. <laughs> also our um, papers that we use is actually from our recy uh, paper recycling. Uh, it's really, like everything is handpicked by us and we did everything in our own at the best that we can. Like, of course you use scrap paper. Like what a great idea. There's so much paper that schools go through. That's so cool. Thank you so much. And I also love that you did like a food forest, not just like a couple boxes. It was kind of long-term planning for um, the school year. What were your, what were some of the favorite things that you like to grow in the food forest? It was a strawberry. It's just awesome because by the end of the year, back then before COVID, we actually started salad party. And then we harvested tons of strawberries, but they still keep on coming to the point that I had to give it out to just uh, people in the community just passing by the food forest in the summer. And it's still there. That's good. I have another question, but I don't know if anyone else wants to hop in before me. I'll jump in with mine. Um, my question to Dover Bay is if I were a student at another high school that didn't have an eco club right now, what advice would you give for me for wanting to start an eco club at my school? So I can start first, maybe. So my advice is uh, it won't be easy at first. <laughs> Because we did that when once my, our alumni actually left, we had a hard time being on our feet. That's why I'd say just having like four or five people that can actually do the work and just doing it consistently is enough. Because you get your friends to do it once they know what you're actually doing is making a difference in the club, as well as just make it fun. I just don't like just do work all the time, which we we do, but like we try to make it less um, serious, but still making a big difference in our school. And Athea, Alisa, and Vincy, you can you guys can add to it. I'd like to agree with Mika that it doesn't. You need a lot of people to help you with this, and um that it's mainly a team project for anything revolving around clubs, especially eco clubs, because there's a lot of planning with the gardening and everything. That's so wonderful. Thank you all so much. Um, if anybody has any questions in the chat, um, we're just going to have a couple more minutes or if there are any other questions, maybe Tessa, if you are available to probably answer any questions about the other eco clubs as well. There are so many fun things happening. This is so inspiring. <laughs> I am always happy to be followed up with later too about the Cowichan example or the Ninus Bay example. Um, and I can connect you with the teachers that are um, supporting each of those programs too. So feel free to reach out. Addie's put my email, Central Island Region at Farm to School BC, um, .ca, into the chat bar. But please reach out to me for more questions about those programs. Wonderful. Well, I think maybe we'll end early, which will be exciting. <laughs> Get out into the sunshine. Um, Tessa, did you want to wrap up with anything? 
just a huge thank you to Dover Bay, um, Dover Bay Eco Club. I feel like I've called on you a few times this year <laughs> to support farm to school work, and you always bring such inspiration. Um, I think we really exemplify that balance of action and getting a lot of work done mixed with fun and a sense of community in the work you do. Um, so it's just exemplary the um, inspiration that you're offering to the Central Island region. So thank you for taking the time today. I know life is busy in school right now. So thanks for taking the time out to share with us a little bit more about your Eco Club. And I'm excited that your presentation will be online on our Farm to School website so that others can learn more about the work you're doing and hopefully be inspired to start Eco Clubs at their school. So thank you Dover Bay Eco Club for joining us today. And Addie, I'll pass it over to you. Yes, thank you. That was so wonderful. We have lots of programs here in campus with um, green clubs and things, and I think they just kind of go through these ebbs and flows of energy. So it was really cool to hear how you've structured the club and all the different projects. And I like that you're kind of going where the energy is too, that, you know, somebody's really into recycling. So let's just start recycling everything. <laughs> so good. Like energy ambassadors and stuff. Like there's lots of different projects that you can do. So it's nice to see such a broad range that everything doesn't have to be, you know, it's not everything about energy or not everything about the garden. It's lots of different. Um, so I'm just going to share my last, our last slide here. Um, so if you'd like to stay in touch with us, um, this recording from this webinar and the, the slides and all the videos from today will be a part of, um, will be uploaded onto our website under the webinar section. So you can check that out. There's also a, a listserv for the Central Island region. So if that's where you live, um, you can sign up for there and be informed of any new happenings um, that's going on. And we have listservs for every region. So sign up for your the region that works well for you. Uh, we also have a monthly newsletter that just went out today and it keeps you up to date on provincial things and what's happening. We have updates from all over the province, everything that we're doing and some resources that we, um, we highlight and any kind of press or anything that's been going on. As well, we have our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow us at Farm to School BC. And we have our next webinar is going to be the last one of the year. It's on June 15th uh, from 3.30 to 4.30 again. And it's going to be on summer garden maintenance. So if there's any um, teachers you know, any administrators, PACs, whoever's doing the summer garden maintenance, it's gonna be a really helpful webinar um, to sign up for and to know what you have to do to keep everything going for July and August. But I love the idea of just letting things go to seed and collecting that. That sounds a lot less stressful. <laughs> or letting people like Michaela just doing all of the work, it seems like, for years. <laughs> Not everybody has dedicated students like that. So thank you everyone so much for joining us today. And um, check out our, web our website for the webinar link afterwards. And Addie, I think Mika has one more thing to add in. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. So I'm just, uh, the Bay Eco Club is actually a part of the Nanaimo Climate Action Hub too. So on May 18th, if anyone's interested about learning where a recycling go or like composting system in Nanaimo, we actually host a present presentation series, The Climate Urgency in Nanaimo, and RDN and the city in Nanaimo will be there to present about that and I'll be hosting. <laughs> so yes, just letting everyone know about that. Thanks Mika, that's great. So many events going on. 